out. Oh, Jack, what is it? What happened? I banged my thumb fixing those darn shutters. Oh. I hate this house. I hate it. Mother, I ripped my dress on the old rose bushes, and I've got scratches all over my arms. And, oh, let's go back to the city, please. Theater 5 presents Soundtrack of a Happy Family. Good-looking sign, if I do say so. House for sale, Daniel Walker Realtor. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can miss it. Now, let's walk up the driveway, and I'll show you the house itself. It's around this bend, beyond the trees. The Carters used to live here. Mr. and Mrs. Carter, Nancy, Jack, and the baby before they went away. Now, some people are going to say right off that this house is too isolated. When they say that, stop right here. Ask them to look around at the trees. Then ask them to take a deep breath, smell the pine. Then ask them to listen. <laughs> there you are, a cardinal. Tell them this is something pretty scarce. Trees, birds, privacy, and all only 30 miles from the city. Now they get their first look at the house. There you are, dead ahead. Now, some customers will say it's too big. But when the right family comes along, they'll just about buy the place on sight. I remember how it was with the Carters that day. Golly! It's practically an old ruin. Oh, it's not as bad as that, Nancy. But, Mr. Walker, we were really thinking of something smaller, more modern. Oh, no, Bill, no. It's priceless. You mean you like it? You're kidding, Ma. I love it. And I didn't know there were any houses like this anymore. So close to the city. You know, it's exactly like the house I grew up in. Oh, and look at all that wonderful space. All I can see is an awful lot of wonderful grass that somebody will have to cut, meaning me. Mother, out here so isolated. Well, how could I ever have any dates? No boys would come to see me. She would think about that. Girl. Ha, huh. your first thought was about having to cut a teeny weeny little bit of grass. Oh, children, stop it. Now, if we buy this house, there will be some extra work and inconvenience, yes. But, but this isn't the kind of house you just sleep in. We could be a family here. Not just five people more or less living together in an apartment. Mr. Walker, show us the inside, please. Well, the Carters bought the house. And they worked like beavers to fix it up. But that first summer, they sometimes found it rough going. Darn, I'll never get all this grass cut. Mom, why can't we have a power mower? What, Jack? Why can't we have a power mower like everybody else? Because they cost money. And all our money's going into the house. The house, the house. I'm getting pretty sick of this old dump. Mom! Oh, Mom! Yes, Nancy, I'm coming. Mother, look at my hands. They're a sight. All blistered and everything. I, I simply cannot dig up any more of this old garden. All right, then. Just leave it as it is. You mean I can quit? Mm-hmm. If you want this unfinished corner to be a monument to you, you can. Huh? Well, in years to come, people will notice this corner full of weeds and rocks, and we'll just say, well, oh, that's Nancy's corner. That's where she quit. Oh, Mother, you wouldn't. I certainly would. Now, if you want something nice, it has to be worked for. And this is going to be our home. Oh, all right, all right. But my hands are a mess, and they'll never look nice again, never. Hello, Bill. Oh, hi, honey, I didn't see you. <laughs> I've been pruning the lilacs and cracking the whip over the unhappy slaves. Oh, honestly, Bill, I don't 
think the younger generation knows what work is. Well, sweetheart, there are times I'm tempted to rebel, too. Oh. I could have been happy in the city. Oh, Bill, but you saw what was happening to Jack and Nancy in the city. Well, they were staying out until all hours. They were bored and restless. And they were getting ready to try something, anything, just for kicks. Yes, I know. At least now they don't have time to be bored or restless. But when I started to say, even though you've had to crack the whip over us, I'm beginning to be kind of proud of our house. I'm going to like it here after all. Bill, I am so happy to hear you say that. I, I could cry. Hey, hey, no time for crying. Grab the end of that board and hold it for me. <laughs> Look at the house. They did a pretty nice job, wouldn't you say? Just take the shutters. Have you ever tried scraping and then putting two coats of paint on 40 pairs of shutters? Dad? Dad, listen, I have an idea. Yes, son, what is it? All these shutters, it, it takes so long to paint every single little panel. It, well? Couldn't we just paint the outside, the side that'll show? <laughs> Confidentially, son, I had the same idea, but I wouldn't dare. Think what your mother would say. No, the Carters didn't skimp. They worked all summer. When the last shutter was painted and hung, the grounds in shape, the picket fence repaired, the whole place looking nice, they got together out on the lawn just to admire it. Well, assembled members of the Carter family, look upon thy work and admire it. Is that a house or is that a house? Oh, Dad, it's... It's super. Well, I don't even mind all the calluses on my hands. I think. <laughs> it's really pretty neat. I like having a big bedroom all to myself. I'm going to send some pictures back to the kids in the city. I have to admit it myself. That's a house to be proud of. As soon as I get over feeling tired, I will be proud of it. You know, it's sort of nice to see something that you... Fixed up and, and know you've done a good job. It gives me a warm feeling. I know what you mean. It's not a house anymore. It's our house. Children, somehow I feel as if you'd both just graduated. I don't know from what, but, but graduated. Well, now, to celebrate, I'll fix a picnic and we'll drive to the beach. We'll take the whole day off. We've earned it. The Carters had their picnic. Then started in on the inside. Well, let's go in. We can use the back door here. Ah, here. Here's the kitchen. Not very modern. Mrs. Carter bought a second-hand stove and refrigerator to make the money stretch. But it's bright and cheery. Now, over here... Over here is the uh, dining room. Hmm. See the table and chairs? Look antique, don't they? Mrs. Carter bought them secondhand, and Mr. Carter and Jack refinished them. Stayed up late nights to get them finished in time for Thanksgiving dinner. Bill, will you say, Gray? The Carter family is about to celebrate its first Thanksgiving in its new home. Lord... We thank thee for the blessings thou hast bestowed upon us. We thank thee for each other and for bringing us close together. For the love we feel for each other, for this house, for too many things to mention, but which in our hearts we hold dear. Amen. 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 Now, darling, you can carve the turkey. Oh, I hope it's done enough. No, no, there's a second order of business. Uh, Jack, have you a package? Right here, under my chair. Hand it to your mother. Oh, here, Mom, from all of us. What? What in the world? Nancy, you start our little speech. Yes, Dad. <clears throat> Mother, it's just a token of appreciation from the Carter family to Mrs. Laura Carter. Wife, mother, housekeeper, cook, maid. Dishwasher, chauffeur, telephone answering service, nurse, tutor. And friend, companion, and helpmate. I just can't say anything. Hey, Mom, you're not supposed to cry. It's a pair of candlesticks for the sideboard. I'm... I'm so happy.
saw the kitchen and dining room. Here's the living room. Kind of big. Not too much furniture, but see what the Carters did. Left one end open with a hi-fi, a ping-pong table, and a dartboard. Made a game room out of this end. And could use it for dancing, too, on certain occasions. Nancy? Hmm? Oh, yes, Jack. You know what I heard a couple of the guys saying at school? At school? What? They said, well, that I had a pretty nice-looking sister. They did? Yeah, honest. Well, do you know, that is the first compliment you've ever paid me, even if it is second-hand. Oh, sis. Well, I think so, too. You're pretty nice-looking. For a girl. Would you like me to look like a boy? <laughs> I'll tell you something. Yeah? I used to think you were a little stinker. But now, well, you're not bad for a brother. <laughs> <laughs> Sis? Mm-hmm. Uh, y- you know, there's uh, going to be a freshman dance, and uh, there's a girl I'd like to invite. Oh. But, well, darn it, I don't know how to dance. I wondered if, well, oh, maybe you Of course, could... Jack. I'll be glad to. Uh-huh. Here, let me put a record on, and we can start right now. There. Oh, hey, you, you can't twist to that. Well, we'll start with something basic. Does the box try? Okay. Now, take my hand uh-huh. like this. Yeah. Okay, now put your other hand against my back. Right. Uh-huh. Now, watch my feet. Now, this is the upstairs. Four bedrooms. By the look of it, this was Jack's room. You see the butterfly collection on the wall? The rock collection? He used to study here. Come in. Oh, hi, Dad. Thought you were in bed, son. Getting pretty late. Is it? Oh, gosh, I didn't realize what time it was. I'm doing an experiment for biology lab tomorrow. Experiment? With paramecium. They're one-celled organisms. Dad, look. Hmm? Uh, look in this microscope the biology teacher loaned me. There, you see them swimming around? Well, I'll be darned. They're swimming around like anything. They're too small to see with the naked eye, but they're as alive as we are. Well, maybe they don't need sleep, but you do. Off to bed now, son. Okay, Dad. You know, I'm thinking of being a scientist when I grow up. And this room? Yes. This was Nancy's room, all right. Look, they let her have an extension phone. (laughs) These teenagers and their telephoning. Hello, Betty? Well, I just had to call you. What do you think? Tommy Griggs spoke to me today. He said, hello, Nancy Carter. I am not making it up. It was after English class, and he was waiting outside the door. And he said, hello, Nancy Carter. And then you'll never guess what he said next. He said, I wondered if you'd care to go to the senior prom with me next week. Sure, those were his exact words. What did I say? (laughs) I said, yes, of course. Oh, I like him. I think he's awfully good looking. And this is the nursery. Little Dickie's room. See the mother goose figures Mrs. Carter painted on the wall? Little Dickie. Let's see. He he wasn't quite old enough to talk yet. What is it? Come here, come here. Now, let me just hold you. Here, darling. Oh. Well, let me feel your forehead. No, it's cool. (laughs) You're nice and dry. Well, it's just a bad dream, is that it? Just a bad old dream. There, sweetheart, you go back to sleep now. That's it. Back to sleep. Back. Now we come to the master bedroom. Nice and big. Has a private bath. A good selling point, even if it isn't modern. I guess it was here Mr. Carter broke the bad news to his wife. He waited as long as he could. Laura? Mm-hmm. You awake, Laura? Yes. I'll wake. Ah, you've been tossing for hours. Yeah. Is anything wrong, darling? Well, not exactly wrong. Not exactly wrong? I don't understand. Laura, I've been promoted, transferred. Huh? Yes, I'm to be head of the Los Angeles office. Los Angeles? But, Bill, that's wonderful. 
that's a big step up for you. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, Oh, I understand. It also means moving way out to California. That's it. And selling the house. Oh, Bill. I love this house. And we've been so happy here in... In my heart, I never want to go away from it. Oh, that's being silly, isn't it? I know it is. We have to go where your job is. I'm afraid we do, honey. We'll sell the furniture, too. Start fresh out there. Well, when do we have to move? As soon as we can. I got them to agree we could wait until school was out. But that's only ten days off. Oh, my, we'll have to work terribly fast. Oh, and Bill, the children. Now, now, how can we ever break the news to the children? I certainly hate to do it. Oh. Yeah, I know. Tomorrow's Sunday, and we'll have a day at the beach, a picnic. One last wonderful day together at the beach, and then when we get home, we'll tell them. Hmm. Looks like we've reached the garage. Two-car garage. Not that they could afford two cars... But the extra space came in handy for storage. Now, let's roll the door up. Hey, Mom, there isn't another sandwich, is there? No, even the crumbs are gone. I could use a little nourishment myself. Oh, even little Dickie's hungry. Oh, he's in luck, though. He has half a bottle left. Here you are, darling. Still a long ride home. Dad, couldn't we stop someplace for a hot dog? Oh, please, and a milkshake. Honestly, we're starving. Sorry, kids, we can't spare the time. At this rate, it'll be midnight by the time we get home, and I have a big day at the office tomorrow. And besides, we have something to tell you when we get home. Golly, you both sound so serious. I can't imagine what the mystery's all about. Well, couldn't we go a little faster? We're just crawling. You can get around that truck ahead now. Bill, no, no, now, no reckless chances. Standing rule in the Carter family. Your mother's right, son. There's a curve ahead. But golly, midnight. We'll starve. Oh, I know, I know. Let's sing something. That'll make the time pass fast. All right. How about, uh... Well, how about row, row, row your boat? Fine. Come on, Ed. You start. We'll all join in. Well, sure, Mother. Oh, okay, Mom. <clears throat> row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 let the down the stream. There's something coming at us. Dad, it's a truck. Look out! What's the matter with that guy? He must be crazy. Get off with it. Get off with it. That's how the house comes to be for sale. With everything just the way they left it. But it'll sell easily. It's a nice house. A happy house. Just as they were a nice, happy family. Soundtrack of a Happy Family, written by Robert Arthur and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Augusta Dabney, George Petrie, Peter Fernandez, Rosemary Rice, and Bill Griffiths. Audio engineer Marty Foley.